Welcome back everyone to the Networking Basics mini lecture series. Today we are continuing the subject of IPv4 subnetting. This is a continuation of the IPv4 basic subnetting mini lecture. We will start by doing a quick review through example and uh, reviewing the important formu formulas and then we will do a case study uh, we will actually apply uh, the formulas and uh, everything that we've learned over the last two weeks. Quickly, what is subnetting? It allows the creation of multiple networks from a single address block. And how do we subnet? We subnet by transforming host bits into network bits, thus creating additional networks from a single address block. So here are two examples of the process of borrowing. We have a base address of 192.168.1.0 and this is our base mask for that address. So in this first example if we borrow three bits, that is if we transform three bits, three host bits into network bits, our new mask will be 255.255.255.224 and a prefix length of 27. Number of networks will be 2 to the B, where B is the number of borrowed bits. Therefore, 2 to the th is 8. So we have 8 new networks. And 2 to the H minus 2 is the number of hosts uh, per new network. So here we have, after having borrowed, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have exactly five host bits left. So H equals five and B equals three. And two to the five, two power five minus two is 30. So after we have subnetted, we can accommodate 30 hosts per subnet. And we have exactly 8 subnets after having borrowed 3 bits. Now in this next example, if we borrow 4 bits, that is if B equals 4 and H equals 4, 2 to the B, that is 2 to the 4 equals exactly 16. So we have 16 new networks, 16 subnets, and in each subnet we have 2 to the 4 minus 2 equals 14. So in each of the new subnets we've created we have we can connect up to, or attribute or assign up to 14 IP addresses and each new network will have a subnet of 255.255.255.240. When subnetting, we have important formulas and variables that we need to remember. These formulas form the basis of subnetting. So the formula 2 to the power b is the number of subnets resulting from sub subnetting, where b represents the number of borrowed bits. After we have subnetted, we are left with um, with host host bits. So two to the h minus two represents the number of hosts per subnet. And finally, you should remember that thirty two is the magic number. That is b plus h plus n must always always be equal to thirty. So if you remember these three formulas, you should be able to subnet. So if you remember these three formulas here you will be able to apply uh, and subnet any network based on specific requirement. Now let's move forward and apply everything that you've learned in the last two to three weeks to the following case. So here it is important to understand the requirements and the information that is given to us. So here we are given the address, the base address 200.192.1.0 slash 24 
uh, to use in your network design. Your network uh, consists of four segments or four separate networks. You have the HR, Human Resources LAN, the R&D LAN, the Admin LAN, and the the LAN or the uh, the WAN. Uh, pardon me, the WAN uh, that links R1 and R2 also require IP addresses. So the network topology has been uh, depicted here. So we see the admin network uh, is a separate segment that requires exactly 31 hosts. The R&D segment represents uh, or needs requires two hosts or 30 hosts, sorry. Uh, the link uh, between uh, routers R1 and R2 uh, needs two IP addresses and the HR uh, requires 15 addresses. So we have in this diagram, this topology, we have exactly four networks. So here we have exactly four networks. And each network needs to be assigned a separate network ID or area code. The further constraint that it has been imposed is that the addressing plan should have equal size subnets and the further constraint is use the small subnet size that will accommodate the appropriate number of hosts. These two constraints are will be very important in the next step where we actually do the calculation. So in this case, in this case study, based on our network requirements, we need to find the smallest value of H such that 2 to the power of h minus 2 is greater to or equal to 31. Very, very important note is that we always subnet based on the size of the largest segment. In our case, the largest segment is 31 hosts. We must always subnet based on the subnet size of our largest network. Let us examine values of H that meet uh, or exceed this requirement. That is, values of H that will uh, yield uh, a value of uh, greater or equal to 31. So let us compute for different values of H. So bring, I bring your attention to the top right. So if H is equal 3, 2 to the power of h minus 2 would be 6. 6 is not greater than 31. h equals 4 doesn't meet the requirement. h equals 5, neither. h equals 6, yes. And h equals 7. Both uh, values of h uh, exceed uh, or are equal to 31. Now, based on the requirement from the last page, we need uh, to use a value that will uh, minimize address waste. Therefore, this eliminates h equals 7. And our value uh, that meets uh, the requirement is h equals 6. Therefore, the number of host bits required is 6. Now that we have h equals 6, uh, we can compute the value of b. And we know that 32 equals n plus b plus h. Therefore, b will be equal to 32 minus n, which is 24, minus h, which is 6. So uh, we will be left with uh, a b of... Uh, we are therefore transforming uh, two host bits into network bits leaving us to 2 to the 2 equals 4 networks. So by borrowing 2 bits we are we have subnetted our base address into 4 networks or 4 subnet. So in summary we have H equals 6 and B equals 2 leaving us with so we have divided our base address into 4 networks and each network uh, can accommodate up to 62 hosts. Here's a slide that shows uh, the summary of our uh, subnetting. 
and the resulting subnet mask, which is uh, this value, 255.255.255.192. So each new network will carry this subnet mask. Now we need to be able to answer the following question. What is the network ID, the first usable, the last usable, and the broadcast address for each new network that we've created? We can do this the long way and uh, calculate uh, the network ID for each new subnet, and then uh, the first usable, uh, last usable, and brought. However, uh, there is a trick uh, that will get you uh, filling uh, or completing this table in no time. And the trick is as follows. We take the new subnet mask, in specifically the last octet, the last decimal value of our last octet, and we subtract it from 256. So you subtract the value of the last octet from your mask from 250, which gives you 64. That 64 represents the subnet size, or more specifically, it represents the distance between each subnet. So remember this number, remember this number as we move on to the next slide. So let's note the number right here is 64. So between each subnet, we will have exactly uh, a distance of exactly 64. Our first network ID will be 200.192.1.0. And the next uh, network ID will be plus 64. Plus 64, 128. Plus 64, 192. Having the network ID, we can then compute all other uh, variables in the table. We know that the first usable IP is always the network ID plus one. So this will be dot one, this will be dot 65, dot 129, and dot 193. The broadcast address will be one less than the network uh, ID of the next subnet. So in this case, it's 64 minus 1, so 63, 127, 191, and 255. And now we can easily calculate the last usable IP, knowing that it is the broadcast minus 1. So this is 60, 62, 126, 190, and 254. Very important to note that the first subnet is subnet 0. The second subnet is subnet 1. The third subnet is subnet 2. And the fourth subnet is subnet 3. The last step is to assign the subnet addresses to each of the segments. So in this case, we've assigned uh, subnet 0 to the admin network. Uh, subnet 1 uh, to the R&D network, uh, subnet 2 to the WAN link, and subnet 3 to the HR network. And for each subnet we have a range of uh, usable IP addresses, and of this usable IP address we must assign one to the router interface uh, to serve as the gateway address for this subnet. Uh, same thing with the R&D, we must pick uh, an address from the usable address range and permanently assign it to the uh, interface of uh, the uh, router. And same thing with the HR network, we pick a valid IP or usable IP and permanently assign it to the interface of that uh, router. <coughs> to serve as the gateway for this subnet. And here we will have on each end of this WAN link we will have uh, an IP uh, taken from this usable or from this range. So it gives us uh, quite a number of addresses uh, exactly 62. Uh, we only need two so we'll be left with 60 uh, that 
won't be really doing anything. Hope you found this uh, video in instructional. Uh, the next uh, video will be on how to use the VLS VLSM chart uh, to perform some subnetting. Hope to see you soon. Bye.